the last days. We've been talking about the from Adam until the new earth and the new heaven. And we see on the board up here, right there on that blackboard, we have two timelines, two timelines. Took years for me to discover that as I begin to read the Word of God, I begin to see in the scriptures when they talked about the kingdom. John the Baptist says, the kingdom of God is near. And I'm thinking, gosh, it was near back then. We are really near. But then I found out that their timeline, they did not know about the church age of 2,000 years. Everybody got that? 2,000 years. Some of you probably got it. Some of you ain't. So I'll be covering some of the things to drive it in. And so we're here in the church age. So now when we look here, look, everybody look at the board now from the cross all the way to the rapture. This is the next event. Now there's many other things that are going to happen, believe me. Uh, you've got roughly 2,000 years there, okay? Now we get all excited. 2,000 years? My goodness. Well, you know, to God, one day is 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is but one day. So it's only been two days since Jesus was crucified, and then the rapture takes place, the church. But now we see that uh, this, our timeline has 2,000 years more than up here. Everybody see that? When you read scriptures, you'll see that. All right, it's very important. Because they were believing that the kingdom was much closer. That's why John the Baptist says, Behold, the kingdom of God is near. Now, what does that mean to you? It's near. <laughs> Round the corner. <laughs> okay. But, now we, but that, was the, that was the revelation that they had. And that's the way it's supposed to have been. But because of disobedience of the Jewish nation as a whole, God's plan was to use, use the Jewish nation to evangelize the other nations, the Gentile nations. But because of unbelief, and if you read all through the scriptures, which I know you have, I can't go through them all, you'll see unbelief, unbelief, unbelief in the, in the wilderness, unbelief, unbelief. Jesus preached in his hometown, unbelief. They're going to throw him off the mountain, throw him off the cliff. How many understand that? You know that in the Word of God. So he had to uh, turn to the Gentiles, and you read it, the, the 28th chapter of the book of Acts, where Paul says that. Uh, Isaiah said it, Jesus said it, and Paul said it. Hard of hearing, stiff-necked, hard-hearted. Now God is turning to the Gentiles, okay? That's the last chapter in the book of Acts. And by the way, there's no amen in the, back, in the book of Acts. How many know that? You know why? Because we're still in the book of Acts for 2,000 years. That's new to some of you, isn't it? We are, okay? All right, now. The reason I want to teach the church this is to enhance your faith. When you study the scriptures, and by the little diagrams that I give you about the two timelines, when you study the scriptures, you can pinpoint that area that you're, uh, that you're reading. Okay. Now when you go into Daniel, we know that Daniel is in Babylon. Is that true? We all know that. Babylon, remember the Jews, uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in with his army and took the Jews into captivity. Isaiah, when you, not Isaiah, but Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, he prophesied that that would happen 200 years before it happened. Now, to me, when I read something like that, boy, this is true, isn't it? I mean, how does anybody know the future other than God? So on and on and on and on, when you study the scriptures and you study prophecy, you see it is all prophesied way before it happens. Okay, if you, if you, you, know, you, can, you can at least do this. Do, do this if you understand, okay? See, because I, I don't know... I don't want to leave you in the jungle. <laughs> I want to know that you're seeing the, the light where we can come out of the jungle. <laughs> but if you sit there, I'm thinking, 
Is he thinking about breakfast or supper or what? <laughs> How many love me? Not much. I'm pushing it, ain't I? <laughs> all right. So you go all the way back to Adam, all right, from the birth of Christ, 4,000 years. Now, I know scientists says this and scientists says that, but when the flood came in Noah, where's Noah at up here? The flood. Let me tell you, water came out of the ground. Bloosh! Came out of the heavens. Bloosh! All that mud and all that you had, when it began to settle, it created those layers. Layers of different layers of sand. How many know that? Huh? See, science says, oh, it's thousands of years, or yeah, or millions of years for that uh, to be formed. Well, it happened to be formed when the flood came and all the powerful water. Water is so powerful, it moves mountains. How many understand that? You don't stand in the way of flood or of water. So it moved mountains and all of that. You go up into uh, the Midwest, you find, you find oyster shells up here. Well, my goodness, where did that come from? The ocean's a long ways off from that because it was all pushed up there and made those layers. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so much for that. Now, let's go ahead, and what I want to do is find where we're going to talk about tonight is in uh, uh, Ezekiel 37. So we're going to put that about, all right, here's Babylon right here. So Ezekiel 37 is somewhere right in here. Do you see that? Right here on your map. Now you got a David, King David and the cross with the birth of Christ is a thousand years. <clears throat> Babylon, when they went into captivity on that little thing that uh, handout I give you, <clears throat> it's really 606. From the birth of Christ back 606 years, you come to Daniel. And that's, that's the head <coughs> of the statue right here at the beginning. See that right here? Right here. That's the 606 right here. And all of these parts of this statue represent certain nations in which we went over that. Babylon, uh, Persia and the Medes, Alexander the Great, Rome, and then on down to the toes, the Antichrist, the stone that destroys all those nations. Now, the people, if you read the scriptures, the people are still there in those nations. How many of you know that? The people are, there's people still in Babylon, there's people in uh, uh, Iran, which was Persia. They changed that somewhere back in the 30s to Iran. All the peoples are still there, but their king and their uh, might of their kingdom doesn't occupy the known world. See, each one of these kingdoms occupied the known world. They captured one another, then they captured them, then they captured them, and it goes right on down to the day. Okay, let's get into Ezekiel now, because Israel is important. Uh, Jerusalem is in the center of the world. That's our stake, okay? Right there, right over here where the cross is. We drive our stake down. Remember we said the stake? You can build in a house. You start this way, this way, this way, this way, and then you're able to square it off. And that's the center of this building. There was a stake driven. That's the, that's the marker. Everything is marked from that point. So, as we look at this timeline, we are in this area of Babylon. Now, why did the Jews end up in Babylon? You have to ask yourself a question. Why? Disobedience, not obeying God, making, uh, going after false gods. So God had to do that. But he warned them way back in Jeremiah time, way before, way before uh, they went into captivity back here. He said that, you, Jeremiah says, you're going to go into uh, Babylon for 70 years. That's how Daniel knew when the time was up. He read Jeremiah and found out, wow, we've been here 70 years. It's time for us to leave. <coughs> God raised up a man in the Persia kingdom. How many of you have ever heard of Cyprus and Darius? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
Darius. He prophesied years before Darius was even born, catch it, way before he was even born, that he would be the king of Persia, and he's the big horn on that ram. Remember that mirror, the big horn? <laughs> the little horn was Persia. I mean, I mean, uh, was the met Mets. We were talking the other day about that. She knew it. She told me right off. I said, wow, getting through. But anyway, <sighs> we come back to this period of time now. We said that way before the Jews went into Babylon, it was prophesied in Jeremiah. I wish we had time to put every scripture up. But you just have to put it down in your memory, and then when you read it, it you'll see. Okay, so that's my po not my point. I'm just refreshing your mind a little bit. Now we're going to go into what I really want to zero in on tonight. Now if you have, if you have this statue here, you will see that the dates. Babylon Empire was from 6... 26 to 539, okay? Of course, they were in place before the king got that vision of the statue. We understand that? Then, back, then you come on down to 606, okay? Then, then what you find out is that was the beginning, uh, the beginning of the prophecy. Now, we had all these different kingdoms. Now, just to refresh your mind, most of you know there's two more kingdoms before Babylon, which is not in this statue, because that was already passed. Two kingdoms that ruled the known world at that time. See, all of this is over there around the Mediterranean. You understand? Turkey, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, all of that is over there, even today. Notice, everything is over there in the center of the world. You've got to see that, okay? You should study prophecy. Powerful thing to see. Israel is right there, the center of the world. Where was Jesus crucified? The center of the world. Where was he born? The center of the world. Where was David at? The center of the world. Everything's right over in that area. Adam and Eve, the tower, all of it, right over there, right over there. This known of the world, Canada, South America, I mean, you don't see that in the scriptures. Now, some people can pick it out of one thing or another, but it's not very clear. Okay, so everything is over there. But what happens over there affects the rest of the world. When Jesus was born over there, who would think that a little baby born in a manger would affect your life today. Powerful thought. And this is God's plan, okay? So when you read the scriptures, we see that. So who was the first uh, two kings? Anybody know? Egypt. Got it? Remember a lot about Egypt? And the other kingdom was what? Assyria. Hmm? Assyria. Assyria. Syria. Very good, Mike. Syria was the nation that came in and took the ten tribes into captivity. You got that? All right. And by the way, the Antichrist is supposed to be a Syrian. Well, we'll put it on, the, on this shelf. Next week it might be somebody else. But tonight we're going to settle for that. All right. So, you know, some of these things we can shift around just a little bit, Okay. So I've studied all that for quite a few years. All right. So then you have all of your all of those, but it don't have Assyria or Egypt. And of course, they captured the known world at that time, just about all of it. OK, now there's another kingdom over there that captured a lot. And that was Turkey, it's the Ottoman, Ottoman kingdom, which was Turkey. And they ruled Israel for 500 years until World War II was over, and the English went in there, drove them out, and captured Palestine. And then we have a, a, a process of the United Nations getting together and all those nations over there, and they changed their border lines and gave Israel 
a piece of land, okay? And that's when all heck hit the fan. <laughs> right away, the Arabs was not going to have Israel, the Jews over there, but they didn't do it. They didn't, I mean, just think, they just, they, would, they didn't have it, hardly any guns or anything. And they beat back all of those Arab nations. Okay, I know you've read your history books. All right, let's, let's go get into the scriptures now. First scripture I want to turn to, turn to Ezekiel 37, verse 1. All right. God is going to tell us something through the prophet Ezekiel. And here's what he says. The hand of the Lord was upon me, upon Ezekiel. And he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Hip bone connected to the... I remember that, I remember that song years ago. <laughs> All right. Verse 2. And he caused me to pass around about among them, and behold, there were very many human bones, now we know they're human beings, in the open valley uh, or plain, behold, they were very dry. Now, I don't have time to go into all of the symbolic symbols that's, that we have in the Bible, but most of you know there's a lot of, 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 of that in the Bible. In the book of Revelation, uh, when you read the book of Revelation, you've got seven, 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 a lot of sevens in there. All right, so in this thing, now I'm not going to uh, uh, read any more here, but we're going to skip over now and go into the interpretation of these dry bones. All right, that's where we're going. All right, because of time, okay? So, let's start in Ezekiel verse 10. Ezekiel 37 verse 10. Now we're going to get the interpretation. Now remember I said Scripture interprets Scripture. Most cases, the parables, when you read the parables... <clears throat> they are interpreted at the end. Most of them, very few are not. Some of them are not. But many of the prophecies are interpreted. So we're going into the interpretation of chapter 37 about the dry bones. <clears throat> now, Ezekiel is talking in verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Now, you know, God gives us silly things to do. If you're not obedient, you're going to say, People will think I'm stupid out here in this valley prophesying up to a bunch of dry bones. Say, so you got to see how the prophet feels. Say, but he was obedient. He knew God, what God was doing. Say, so you just do what God tells you to do. Sometimes you'll say, this is stupid. Yeah, it may be stupid to the human mind, but God takes the simple things to confound the wise. I mean, look who he, who he picked to preach, me. <laughs> Boy, yeah, I said a mouthful there, didn't I? All right. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath and spirit, not, not a capital spirit there, small spirit, which is the spirit of man, came into the bones. And they lived and stood up upon their feet and exceedingly great hosts. All right. You got that? Now, <coughs> He's simply saying, now, I'm going, to, I'm going to put life back into Israel. And, and when you finish, we finish this chapter, we're going to see that God is bringing them back into land, and they're alive and well, and God has plans for them. Yeah, they messed up way back there, but now God is a forgiving God. He chose them to be a nation to share the gospel with the world. Now, I want you also to see that... In the, how many knows about the 70th week of Daniel? Raise your hand if you know about the 70th week. All right, a very few people. The 70th week. Because of the transgression of Israel, they sinned against God and was rebellion. They were taken out of the land, okay, <coughs> and put into captivity in Babylon. They spent 69 years, and by the, not 69 years, but 69, uh, you, go, you go 69, I'm trying to, 
One week, seven days is seven years. It goes to 69 weeks, which is multiply that 69 by that seven, and you get 430. 400, that's right, isn't it? 430? Help me out. Okay. 430. Now they got seven more years that they got to be punished. And that's what tribulation years is. That last seven years is for the Jews to finish their time of punishment for their transgression. Okay? All right. Now, remember, in 70 A.D., Titus came in in the, in the, in the, in, in the troops and destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed the city and the sanctuary, and the Jews were scattered all over the world. You got that? Okay. Now, Ezekiel is talking about them coming back home. Uh, turn back to Ezekiel 36, 18. Back to Ezekiel, and then we'll come back to that. All right, everybody's there. So I poured out my wrath, God is talking, upon them. Who is them? The Israelites. For the blood that they had shed upon the land. Where is the land at? The land is Israel. And for their idols, which they had defiled it. They defiled the, the land. Okay, next verse. Next verse. And I scattered them. And I, who is I? God. Who did he scatter? Them. Who is them? The Israelite people. All right. So you've got to identify who I is, them is, and who. All right. Among the nations. Everybody see that? Among the nations. And that happened in 70 A.D. Now, the first time they went into captivity, they weren't scattered to all the nations. They were scattered Where? They were taken to Babylon. You got that? All right, Babylon. Uh, but in 70 A.D., they were scattered into all the nations. Germany. They're here in America. There's eight, 8 million, I believe, Jews here in America. Now, when you read Matthew 25, you will find that when Christ comes back, lands on Mount Olive, and he sets up his kingdom, one of the things that he will do, he will, go, he will send out the angels to gather his elect, Jews, people, elect, and bring them all to Jerusalem. Now, today, many of them are coming back. How many of you know that? Since 1948, they're still coming back, still coming back to, to the land. Okay, this is, all this is, prophecy is being fulfilled in our day. All right, But for those that didn't get back during this period of time, Christ will send out his angels and gather them from all the different nations in the world and bring them all back to Jerusalem, okay? See that picture. Now look, and I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their conduct and their adulterous deeds I judged and punished them. Now, how many of you know they rejected God's grace? When Christ, you come, you come a little bit further here, you know, the cross here. They, had a, they all had a chance to repent and come into the kingdom of God. But they still rebelled. They wouldn't do it. When you read the Gospels, you'll see that Jesus was very harsh on the leadership. The Pharisees, the Sadducees. You know why they were called Sadducees? Because they didn't believe in the resurrection. So they were sad, you see. All right. Just a little humor in there to help you digest some of this. Am I going too fast? Are you, 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 I'm, I'm scattering them. See, first, you, I'm, building, I'm building the frame. Then we can fill it in with the electrical wires and the, and the uh, uh, water pipes and the insulation and the sheetrock and... That's what I'm doing for you now. All right. So, now look what it says. Verse 21. Verse 21. 
But I had regard, concern, and compassion for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they went. Next verse. Therefore say to the house of Israel, talking to Ezekiel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake. How about that, O house of Israel? But for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations to which you went. And I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Because we none of us was like that. We, were, we weren't rebellion, but they were just rebellious, weren't they? <laughs> we know that ain't true. The human nature is very rebellious. Go to the next verse. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name and separate it for its holy purpose from all that defiles it. My name which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them, and this nation will know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord, the sovereign ruler, who calls forth loyalty and obedient service. When I, sh when I shall be set apart by you and, and my holiness vindicated in you before their eyes and yours. Now, that, that's a lot there, and I could preach on that, believe it, believe it or not. So, they had, they had to be punished. How many has kids in here? In your lifetime, how many of you punished your kids? How many never punished your kids? How many punished your kids? All right. That shows you love them. That shows you love them. Can I tell you a story? One time when I was punished, you know, I was really a good boy. That's what my mommy said. <laughs> but my daddy had other views about Brother Bob. <laughs> All right, church. Here we go now. Come on. All right, I think that's enough of that. Well, let's get back over to, you know, there's so much in here. So let's get back over in Ezekiel 37, and let's go with uh, verse 12. All right? 37, verse 12. I've got to move fast. Ah, the time, 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 time. Ezekiel 37. All right. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up. Out. How many of you know they weren't in a, little, a literal grave? The grave represents the nations. Okay, you can put nations in it. But it was like a grave to the Jews because they were not in the land. All right, everybody, get a width of your house. We take you out of your house. How, would, how many would like to come back to your house? Yeah, home sweet home. You see the picture there. And they take you out. It's like you're living with this other family, and it's like a grave, you know. I mean, you're sharing this, sharing that, and they don't like the way you sleep, and you don't like the way they uh, talk. And, and I mean, you know, I'm, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> how many of you ever going on a vacation say, home sweet home? <laughs> yeah, let me back my bed. I want my bed back, Mama. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. O oh, my people, and we'll bring you back home to the land of Israel. So out of their graves, out of those nations. Remember we read that over there in the other chapter. And bring you back home, Israel. Has that happened? Yeah. Say. Uh, did it happen that, that, that God scattered them all over the world? Huh? You know your history books? See, so when you read the scripture, oh, that's already happened. Oh, it's happening now. What's happening now? They're coming back to the land. How, how many years has it been now since that? Since 19 what? 48. 48. But they didn't have Jerusalem, the capital, Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, Mount Olive. But how many of you know they got it now? And when did they get it? In the what? 1967 war. How many remember? Some of you don't remember. How old are you? Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're 36. Huh? 41. 31. 41? 40. You 41, gal? I didn't know that. 
<laughs> All right. So you got to, when you read the you got to see, you, you got to, uh, that's happened. This is happening. This is going to happen. It's exciting. One chapter. I mean, just look, one verse can tell you that. Look what it said. Let's move real quick. All right, Bob, let's move it. Okay. Next verse. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And you, who's you? Well, Ezekiel and the Israelites, when they start coming back. Now, they're not revived spiritually yet. That will be in the short future. You understand that? But nationally, nationally, they have their land. Nationally, they are a state. Nationally, they have a great army. Nationally, they are in the land. So many of this prophecy has been fulfilled. Many other parts of it is yet to be fulfilled. All right, let's finish that now. And cause you to come out of your graves, O oh my people. And what did I say graves were? Nations. Very simple, not complicated. All right, next. And I shall put my spirit in you. Now we're going into the spiritual part of their spiritual life. And you shall, you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Now he's done that. But his spirit, notice his spirit, God's spirit will be put into them. That means that they will have a revival and many of them will come to know the Lord. That is Jesus Christ. Now, we know that will happen uh, during, uh, a lot of that will happen in, uh, when the Armageddon War breaks out. But shall place you, now, and I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know and understand and realize that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Okay? All right, next verse. Let's move on real quick. And the word of the Lord came again to me, saying, now, who's speaking? Ezekiel, and the Lord came. The, the the word of the Lord came again to Ezekiel. Next verse. Son of man, who is that? Ezekiel. Take a stick, stick. Write on it for Judah. How many tribes was in Judah? Two. His companions. Uh, and the children of Israel, his companions. Ten tribes. When did the ten tribes go into uh, uh, captivity? When Syria came down. They went, all right? Judah stayed in the land for two, 200 more years before Nebuchadnezzar came down and took them into captivity. Daniel lived in Judah, okay? And he was a young boy. And so when they took him to Babylon, they castrated him. So that took care of a lot of problems because the king had a lot of women running around, okay? So it didn't bother Daniel. Daniel could say holy. <sighs> then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, his commandment. Now, how many remember that when Solomon died, King Solomon died, Am I talking too loud? Because I got my ear nays. I don't know. Okay. When he died, the nations were split. How many remember that? Two nations was in Judah. And where did Jesus come from? What part? Judah. All right. Okay. Where's Jerusalem at? In the area of, of Judah there. Okay. But so it split. Ten tribes went to the... Uh, South, that's next Egypt, and of course Turkey is north, and so is Russia. So Judah went north. That's the northern part of, of Israel. Okay, but the, the idea, what you want to see is that that prophecy has been fulfilled. How many know, when was it fulfilled? 1948. They came together, and now what do they call Israel. What do they call Israel? Israel. You're right, Israel. <laughs> I got one good student here. I'm, I'm going to keep pumping. You guys going to come alive directly. <laughs> so now when you go over there to ain't Judah and Israel, one nation, two sticks come together, boom, boom, bing, bang. They are now one nation, the nation of Israel. 
God has taken them out of their graves, brought them back to the land, and that land was desolate. That land couldn't grow cactus. But when the Israelites came back into that land, you, you've been over there. You were over there. Frank was over there. It's alive. The Jews brought it alive. Anyway, that's another sermon right there. And that's in the Bible too. All right. Next, next scripture. And join them together. Join what together? The two sticks. I don't want to break it. Two sticks. And, and what was the two sticks? What was the two sticks? In Israel. Very good. Tilton's my name. <laughs> Glad to meet you, son. <laughs> Don't mean to scare nobody. I know I used to say that. I, I couldn't even think of my name. Give me time. My name is, uh, 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 I'll get it directly. Just hold on. <laughs> How many's like that? <laughs> now you guys, and you're smart. I know. <laughs> Where am I at? <laughs> at the shield of faith. Okay. So, one nation and join them together into one stick that they may become one in your hand. Ezekiel, they become one, one nation. Now, next verse, got to move fast now. And when your people say to you, will you not show us what you mean by these? Because they were just as confused as most of us. Next. Say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, ten tribes, his associates, that is uh, Judah, so, and will join them th with it, the stick of Judah, so Judah and Israel, and make them one stick or one nation, and they shall be one in my hand. Now that has happened. That prophecy has been fulfilled. See, now when you say, wow, man, why don't people believe the Bible? Well, I know the God of this world, who is Satan, has blinded them from the glorious light of the gospel. Can a blind man see? No. Only God can make us see spiritually. Okay, go to the next verse. When the sticks on which you write shall be in your hand before their eyes, next, that is their eyes, the Israelites, then say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations to which they have gone. <clears throat> and when did they go? Seven zero. Seventy A.D. Remember that? Titus came in. All right, 70 A.D., at 70 years after Christ was born. Titus was the general in the Roman Empire. From among the nations to which they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. Now, how many of you know there's a big battle going on in the world today about the land of Israel? The Arabs say it's ours. Israel says, no, it's ours. Now they want to divide the land. You catch this now. They're trying to divide the land, take the land away from. Now, Israel has given in. They've given in to, and give them Gaza. You know where Gaza is over there on the land? And, and, and the uh, Palestinians are so thankful for that. They send watermelons to the Israelites. Yeah. And it's fired from a rocket. <laughs> That's how thankful they are. I mean, can you see that? You know, just, I hope this deal with Iran is good. But you know what? The, who, who's going to inspect the Iranian people or the Iranian government if they've got any uh, uranium uh, and making any of that stuff on the atomic bomb? You know who the uh, inspector is going to be? Their own people. <laughs> All right, let's move from that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, where am I at? Here we go, here we go. 
Notice, and we'll gather them, and we'll, who will gather God. them? So somebody tell me, who will gather them? Who had them dispersed from the land? God. Say, it's God, 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 God. It's God. He knows the future. He knows the now. He knows everything. He knows everything about us. He knows the number of uh, hairs on my head. See, I can pick on my buddies because they pick on me. <laughs> All right, listen. I, I, am I getting everybody good, confused? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next. Now, well, there's so much here, but I'm just trying to, you know. All right. And I will make them one nation in the land, in the land, in their land, in the land where Solomon was, David was, their ancestors were. God promised that land to Abraham and his seed. See, that's why God said, for my sake, to show the world that I keep my word. How many remember, for my sake, remember the scriptures we read a little while? For his, I used to say, why his sake? Because a man is only as good as his word. And if we cannot believe God's word, it's all over. So for his sake, he's going to bring them back that the world might see that God keeps his word. God says in uh, Jeremiah 1 12, I watch over my word to perform it. I, God, watches over his word to perform it. That's why we can have confidence in the word of the living God. Don't doubt it. Doubt your doubts, but don't doubt God. God is true. All right, next verse. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places and from all their backsliding in which they have sinned, and I will cleanse them so they be my people and I will be their God. i got a question. Who cleansed you? God. Who made you righteous? God. Who chose you before the foundation of the world? God. Who took you out of the kingdom of darkness? Now notice this. Look at the parallel there. Took the Jews out of their graves. We were in our graves. We were in the kingdom of darkness. Are you listening? And Colossians. We were in the kingdom of darkness. Who took us out? God. So you see the parallel in much of these prophecies about our own experience with God. As a nation, they experience God. As individuals, we experience God. We would still be lost. We would still be in the kingdom of darkness. Satan would still be our master. But God took us out. When we accepted Christ, took us out of the kingdom of darkness and put us back in the land, in the kingdom of God. That's our land. All right, just a little extra revelation there for you. And so they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Next. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Whoop, king. I mean, David, he's dead. Isn't that true? Didn't he die way back here? Let's see, way back here. Where's David at? Dave, there's David right there. 1,000 years ago. Now. Here we are, time of the tribulation, and we're about right here. And this is what we're talking about in this area that God has brought them, the last 60 years, he's brought them back to the land. David, how can that be? But see, if you know the scriptures, it's simple, isn't it? How about resurrection? See, David will be resurrected and he'll have a glorified body. And in his glorified body, he will be the king of Israel. Who will be the head nation of the world? Israel. All the other nations will have to go up there. We get the center of the world. Go up there and worship the king. That is King Jesus. Now notice this. Be king over them. That is over the Israelite people. And they all shall have one shepherd. Now notice that shepherd. Capital S. 
Jesus. He's the king of the world. He's the king of all the nations. David is the king of Israel. Now, when you read that, people say, well, David's dead. Well, see, when you know the scriptures, revelation is so simple. Resurrection. Okay? So, they shall have one shepherd, Jesus. They shall also walk in my ordinance, God is speaking, and keep my statues and do them. Because they'll all be born again after a while. And, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Go to the next verse real quick. Like, They shall dwell in the land in which your fathers dwelt. Who was their fathers? David, Solomon, Abraham, all the way back. Okay? All the, they, they dwell. I gave to my servant Jacob. He had 12 sons. Remember the 12 sons of Israel? Jacob. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to what? Israel. And they shall dwell there and... and they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. See, death means nothing to God. Time means nothing. <laughs> oh! How many, how many know what I was doing there? Very, okay. I mean, he can make tomorrow today, today, tomorrow. He's God. Nothing is possible with God. So wait a minute. David's been dead in the other, but he's going to be resurrected. <sighs> and when you read the last book, and Daniel talks about the resurrection. He talks about the resurrection in the 12th chapter of Daniel. Okay. Next verse. I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will give blessings to them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. Next verse. Time's moving fast. My tabernacle or dwelling place also shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I want you to turn real quick to Revelation. Time's running out, but I want to get this in. There's a lot more I could talk about. But the time element is running this out. So look at uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 7. Everybody there? Here we go. Look at the board. Then I saw a new sky, heaven, and a new earth. For the former sky and the former earth had, had passed away, vanished, and there is no, no, longer, a, 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 no longer exists any sea. All right, where are we talking about there now? The kingdom. We're in the kingdom. Notice. To the kingdom. Everybody see that? Because when he comes back and sets up his kingdom, that's when David will be the king of Israel. He will be the king of the earth. The nation Israel will be the nation that will govern the whole earth. And we as resurrected saints will be at all different parts of the earth ruling and reigning with Christ. Rachel will, will, will teach the kids to sing. <laughs> Every one of us will have a job. But we'll have that relationship with the risen Lord. I'll tell you, that's going to be great. All right, let's uh, all right, you see where that is now. Remember, when you read scriptures, you either go back or now, it's future. You've got to see all that as you study the scriptures. How many understand that? All right, now look at this here. All right, uh, then I saw a new sky, new heaven, and a new earth. The, for the former sky and the former earth, all of this back here, all of this, Woo! All the way to right here. One thousand, all that. No, I, let me back. Let me go further. Yes. Thousand years is over, and then to come over into the new new earth and the new heaven, and then all that will be raced away. Will be no more. All right, you got that pit. Now look, we went all the way to Revelation, where we're at, and where are we at? We are right here just before the rapture. This is where we are. Now, you have what you call Psalms 83. How many of you ever remember Psalms 83? 
All right, Psalms 83 is a war. There's going to be a next war. Now, here's how you can identify Psalms 83. Psalms 83, Israel beats all those nations that surround her. But the war in Ezekiel 38 and 39, God deals with the enemy. Keep that in mind, of those two wars. So the next war will probably be Psalms 83. It looks like it's about to start right now. Up in the Golden Heights right now, Israel has a lot of troops up there. Something is, is going to take place pretty soon. Okay? All right. So when, in Psalms 83, it's the nations that surround Israel, and Israel beats all them back. But Ezekiel 38 and 39, God takes care of that. How many have read that about that war? Okay. All right, now, let's finish this thing real quick, like that five more minutes. Here we go. Verse, uh, verse 2. <laughs> and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautified and adored for her husband. I had a minister say, oh, it's, that's, that's the bride of Christ. We're not the bride of Christ. Now, wait a minute. We are in a different dispensation. That's a different dispensation. We are the bride of Christ in this dispensation, the dispensation of the law, the dispensation of grace. We in grace, we're the church, we're the bride of Christ. See, that's different. When you read scriptures, you've got to understand the various different dispensations. How many know what I mean by dispensation? All right, periods of time. The periods of time when the law was given, that was a dispensation. This is grace. We're under grace today. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are the workmanship of God. Verse 10, Ephesians 2, verse 10. All right, let's move on now. Here we go. I'm going to get this in. And I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived its distinct, distinct words, saying, See, the abode of God is with men. Woo! And he will give in camp, tent among them, and they shall be his people, and God shall personally be with them and be their God. Next verse. <clears throat> God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish or sorrow or mourning, nor grief, nor pain anymore, for the old condition and the former order of things have passed away. All that has passed away. Next verse. And he who is seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. Also, he said, record this. Record this. Write this down. This has been recorded that you might know. These things have been written that you might know. 1 John 5, 13. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. These things have been recorded have been, been written, for these sayings are faithful, accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy, and true, genuine. Next verse. And he further said to me, said to who? Ezekiel, right, I knew you knew it. It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I myself will give water without price from the fountain springs of the waters of life. One more verse, and we'll close. He who is victorious shall inherit all these things, and I will be God to him, and he shall be my God. Powerful. Some people say, well, why don't God come down here and, and tell us what he did? And we crucified him, you remember that? But see, God is so wise. Yes, the son died in our place. He took all of our sins upon himself, became sin with our sins, and we became righteous with his righteousness. I love it. <sighs> wow, what a God. What a God. But here's what he did. He went back to heaven. Yeah, he was crucified. He was buried, he was resurrected, he ascended, and he sent his spirit back to live in every one of us. All over the world, he lives in his people. 
Now you think that through for a moment. When he was here in the flesh, he couldn't do that. See the wisdom of God. Powerful thought. Powerful understanding to comprehend. Man, he is wise. Now his spirit has been sent to live within us, to direct us and guide us, and even show us things yet to come. God himself is living among us right now. He lives in you, and he lives in me. May we comprehend that. May we understand that everywhere we go, God is there in us. Paul says in Corinthians 4, For the power is not of the vessel, but it is of God. And God's plan is awesome. But one day, one day, he will be on the earth, doing the new heaven and the new earth, and a whole lot of good things. If I had time, I had one more scripture. It was so tremendous. It's, it says this. He wants to show his goodness and his mercy throughout the ages to come for us. Did you get it? Not just this age. He wants to show his goodness, his power, his love in the ages, not just age, ages to come. Whew. We serve a great God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now that the spirit of wisdom and and revelation would rest upon all of us in a greater way that we might be